Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. Today I'm going to talk about current comics and how the current comic industry now produces a product which has no substance behind its content whatsoever. And I would say that this is not something that happened by chance, nor is it something that happened simply because these companies made some bad hiring choices and this snowballed on them. No, I would say this is something that has happened to the medium of comics because it was directed to happen by the people, the quote-unquote progressive people, who run the comic industry. And to do this, I'm going to look at one person as an example of all the rest of the quote-unquote progressive people who run the comic industry and show why these kinds of people would produce a product that has no substance behind it whatsoever. And I'm going to do this by looking at Sana Amanat. And I concentrate on her a lot, because she is the number two in control at Marvel Comics. And besides that, she is the public face of Marvel Comics, so she puts a lot of information out there for you to deal with. And, in addition to all that, I am talking about why the content of current comics has no real substance. And what is her actual job title? Her job title is the Vice President of Content and Character Development for Marvel Comics. So, she is the perfect example to use. But, I'm simply using her as an example of all the other quote-unquote progressive people who run the comic industry, because I'm sure there are plenty of people like her at Marvel Comics and at DC and at Image and Boom and all of the other smaller companies as well. And because YouTube seems so keen right now on punishing people for picking on others, I'll have to emphatically state that she is just an example of all of these other comic pros, and not to contact this person whatsoever. Now, when thinking about how to come at this subject, I ran across something which I found was perfect to explain what I wanted to discuss. And it is the fact that Sana Amanat recently received an award from a feminist institution. Now, I'm going to go over this feminist institution itself and this award that she was given as a springboard to what I'm talking about with the lack of any substance within the content of comics right now. Because I would say that one of the mechanisms that these people use in order to keep this ball rolling is to pull out all of these awards and say, look, we may not be doing really well in sales, but look at all the awards we're getting, that we are actually affecting society, we are actually putting out our name so many places that we are doing very well. So I'm going to go over this little award that she got and the foundation that gave it to her. The award is called the Women of Vision Award, or the Mary C. Wilson Award, and it was given to her by the Miss Foundation for Women. Now, briefly, I'll give you a statement from their own webpage to explain what this feminist foundation is about. It says, With over 40 years of history, the Miss Foundation continues to build women's collective power to realize a nation of justice for all. Because, of course... How do you get justice? Well, in the minds of these feminists, you get justice by amassing power. Now, I've gone over a bunch of stuff that comes out of this organization, and they just drank the feminist Kool-Aid so long ago that they don't even have any recollection of how to act like normal people. And, as usual, I'm going to come at this from a very odd angle, but I'm going to tie it all together at the end. So, I found a digital presence for this foundation in two separate places on the internet besides their own website and they would be Twitter and YouTube and I want to look at Twitter itself for a second now what is Twitter well first of all we know that Twitter is a far left leaning company we know this from the fact that they like to ban and shadow ban a certain kind of people from their platform we know this from the statements put out by its owner we know this from their attempts to block any questions about free speech on their platform so we know it's a far left-leaning company, but what does Twitter itself do? Now I know plenty of you probably understand this in the back of your mind, but I want to bring it to the forefront for a minute. What is Twitter? Well, Twitter is a gamification of social interactions. And what do I mean by that? Well, it is a social video game. That's what it is. You have these short social interactions, and you gain points with these short social interactions by getting likes and retweets. And if you get more likes and retweets than the person next to you, then you win. You beat them. This is simply what is going on with Twitter. Now, look at these short social interactions itself for a minute. We know that they 
have to be very short. And because they are very short, there is simply no room for argumentation there at all. That is to say, no rational argument can be built in such a small amount of space. And further, if we look at the tweets which gain the most traction, which gain the most points, which get the most likes and retweets, well, typically they are emotionally laden statements. So we already know that this is a far left leaning company. And we also know that they promote people and their statements that have this quote unquote progressive agenda attached to it. And they downplay and ban and shadow ban people who have the opposite kind of ideas. So if we look at that all together, we can see that these short social interactions are heavily emotionally laden. They exclude any real reason or logic, and they are far left leaning just like their company. And if you want to give that all a name, what would it be? Well, I would call it virtue signaling. And that's what Twitter is. It is a virtue signaling video game. That's all that it is. And we all know that virtue signaling itself has no substance behind its content. You have these people, they make these statements, but if you ask them to back it up, if you ask them to put their money where their mouth is, they will never do it. So these statements of virtue signaling, they have no substance behind their content whatsoever. And if you look at this Miss Foundation on Twitter, they have a lot of followers. They have something like 80,000 plus followers. And of course, why would they have so many followers on Twitter? Well, because they're very good at the virtue signaling game. That's what this foundation is altogether. It's just a big virtue signaling mechanism. And so I would assert that these awards that they give out are also big virtue signaling mechanisms. That's all that this award is to begin with. And if you skip over to YouTube and look at their presence on YouTube, I had to laugh when I got there because I'm looking for this video that shows Sana Aminat receiving this award. And by the way, I'll link that in the description for anybody who wants to go and look at it. But I was looking for this and I found their YouTube site and they've been around for at least three years now and they have a grand total of 136 subscribers. And when I found this video, I was loath to click on it because I knew that I was going to have to click on it several times to get through it and to get the information out of it that I wanted. And in doing so, I would more than double the amount of views on this video because when I got to it, it had three views. It had been out for more than two weeks and it had three views. I clicked on it a bunch of times. It now has something like eight views. But my point is this, if you look at YouTube as a platform, well, it is a platform where your content needs to have substance. I put out videos that are typically 10 to 20 minutes long. And the average time that someone listens to my videos is eight minutes long. And you can't keep someone's attention for eight minutes unless you have some substance behind your content. And so let's go back to this foundation again. If you look at their presence on YouTube, where their content has to have some substance, they are doing pathetic. No one wants to see anything there. But if you go over to Twitter, which is a virtue signaling mechanism, you see that they're doing spectacularly well. And again, why? Because this foundation itself is nothing more than a big virtue signaling mechanism. And these awards that they give out are nothing more than a big virtue signaling mechanism. They have no substance behind their content. And I want to put another nail in that coffin by looking at the woman who gave this award to Sana Amanat. It was this old white haired feminist lady who actually had handlers. You had these people put her up on the stage where she had to talk. And as she spoke, she kept on going going to one side and the handlers would come up behind her and push her back to where she's supposed to be. So this old feminist lady, yeah, she literally had handlers. And I can say positively 100% that this woman, although she was very, very excited to give out this award to Sana Amanat, this woman had no clue what she was saying whatsoever. And how can I say that? Well, I'll give you two little examples from the presentation that she gave about Sana Amanat and her character before she gave her the award. So she was talking primarily and praising primarily Sana Amanat for Miss Marvel Kamala Khan. And at one point, she says the name of the character. She says, Kamala Khan, Aka, Miss Marvel. Now, what in the world did she mean? Well, obviously, she was reading off a teleprompter and it said Kamala Khan, aka Miss Marvel also known as. But this woman had no clue of how to pronounce the name of this character. 
So she probably thought that Kamala Khan Aka was the name of this character. Now, I know that this old white feminist lady is going to have no clue about comic books, or this one comic book in particular, I'm sure. But the thing is that if you're giving someone an award about this specific character, wouldn't you think that the bare minimum information that you should have is how to pronounce the name of the character? I would think so. But it gets better. When this old feminist lady says Sana Amanat's name, and she does it a number of times, she just butchers it. And how do I know this? Well, I have heard Sana Amanat say her own name over and over and over again on her podcasts. And this old lady just butchers it. Now, a quick aside here. I realize that I don't say her name correctly either, but number one, I'm not giving the woman an award, and number two, I just can't be bothered to lisp out Sana Amanoth every time I say the woman's name. But back to the point. My point is that if you're going to give someone an award, you should know the name of the person that you're giving the award to, and you should know the name of the character that you are praising her for over and over again. That is the bare minimum of knowledge that you should have to give out an award, wouldn't you think? But she doesn't have even this bare minimum of information and knowledge. And why not? Because, of course, there is no substance behind what she is saying. It's simply virtue signaling. She doesn't need to know any of this information because giving out this award is just another example of virtue signaling. And that's what this award is. Again, it is just simply virtue signaling. And again, why am I going over all this? Well, because it is these awards that these people who run the comic industry are using in order to show the people who are even higher up than them that, yes, they are making an impact on society at large, and therefore they should be allowed to keep going with what they're doing and producing the product in the way that they are directing it to be produced. This is the type of thing that is keeping them going. It's not sales. It's not popularity. It's not people who are customers supporting them. No, it is these types of awards, this type of virtue signaling, this type of mechanism that has no content behind it whatsoever. Now, for a minute, let's look at this character of Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, herself, and see why this character has no substance behind her at all either. This character is simply another form of virtue signaling. I have covered a number of interviews with both Sana Amanat and with G. Willow Wilson, who are the two co-creators of this character. When G. Willow Wilson is talking about this character, she says specifically that this character was designed not to look like your normal superhero. So, it is specifically designed to look like something else besides your normal superhero. And what would that be? Well, if you look at some of the statements that Sana Amanat has made about this character and characters for Marvel in general, what does she say characters are for? Well, she says that characters, these comic characters, are for pushing positive ideas. So she wants to push ideas with these characters. And of course, what would she think that a positive idea is? Well, it all comes back, all of the statements from G. Will Wilson, from Sana Amanat, even from this old white feminist lady who is giving her this award. What does this character concentrate on? Well, this character is there to be a representation for people to connect to. Because this character is female. This character has brown skin. This character is a Muslim. This character is the daughter of an immigrant family. So you have all of these identity markers. And these identity markers are put there so that people can identify with her. This is specifically what the creators of this character go on and on and on about. Because they say that, well, look, you'll get girls reading this book and saying, wow, look, there is a girl superhero. I've never seen that before. I can be a superhero too. You have kids, which are people of color, looking at the comic and saying, wow, there is a brown skin superhero. I've never seen that before. I want to be like that too. And it goes the same for all the rest. You have these identity markers. It's all centered around these identity markers. This is what the character is built for. It is supposed to promote ideas. As I always say, this character and characters like her are simply ideas in a mask. That is to say, they are ideas in the mask of being a character itself. They are not an actual character. They're simply an idea. 
And so what do you have with this character? Well, you have a character that's not a character at all. It's simply an idea. And here you have another example of something that is simply virtue signaling. It is something that has no substance behind it at all. Because they're saying that Kamala Khan is a hero because of her characteristics, not because she looks like a traditional hero. It's simply because she has the characteristics of being female, of being a person of color, of being a Muslim, of being part of an immigrant family. Since she has those characteristics, that makes her into a hero in the eyes of the people that they are trying to attract to their comics. And characteristics do not a character make, and certainly do not a hero make. But that is exactly what Kamala Khan is. Just an idea that is put out there. And finally, I want to look at something that Sana Amanad said very briefly in her acceptance of this award. It was just an offhand comment, but I find that offhand comments usually give you the best insight into the person and the person's life. She says that when she first got into the comic industry, she went and told her mother that she was going to be producing comics. And her mother's response to that was, Comics? What are comics? Now, Perhaps I just don't get out very much, but I honestly have never met anybody who loves comics, that is to say, makes it part of their weekly, if not daily, routine, who hasn't loved comics since the time they were a little kid. Now, I've met people who tried to get into comics when they were an adult, and usually they just give up after a year or two, and I take over their collection. And there may be people who get into comics when they are an adult, but I would say they would be the 1%. The other 99% would be people who have loved comics since they were a kid. Now, think back to when you were a kid, and you said to your mother, Mom, where are my comics? She would know what you're talking about. She probably didn't know anything about what companies or what superheroes or anything else about them, but if you said to her, Mom, where are my comics? She would know what you're talking about. But Sana Amanat's mother doesn't have a clue what comics are. What does that say to me? Well, that says that she did not have comics in her background when she was a kid at all. And if we combine this with something she said in other interviews, where someone asked her, how were you first introduced to Marvel characters? And how were you first introduced to comics? She said that she was first introduced to Marvel because her brothers watched the X-Men cartoon on television. And what does she say was her introduction to comics? Well, she says she used to read Calvin and Hobbes and Archie. So if you put this all together, what does it say? It says that her brothers watched Saturday morning cartoons, that she had newspapers in her house that had funny pages with Calvin and Hobbes on it, and since her mother doesn't know what a comic book is, I would say that these Archie comics that she came in contact with were probably at the doctor's office or the dentist's office, and she picked one up every once in a while. So there is nothing in her background that says, I love comics. Nothing there that says, I appreciate the medium of comics. This was something, it appears, that she was introduced to as an adult. And probably just part of some job that came up. That's all that it was. Now, why am I saying all this? Because if you look at the stated reason from Marvel and Sana Amanat herself of why she was brought into Marvel, it was that she was brought in to change Marvel Comics into something new for a new kind of audience. Now, why would you take someone who has really no experience with comics, because she had only two years of working at a small company within comics to begin with, and she has no love for comics, she has no real understanding of the medium, why would you take such a person and put them into your company so that they could change the way that you make your entire product? That makes no sense. Of course it makes no sense, unless because her hiring was another form of virtue signaling. Because she's a woman, she's brown-skinned, she's a Muslim, she's the daughter of an immigrant family, just like her character. And so, why was she brought in? Well, it was just virtue signaling on the part of the people who ran Marvel at that time. They wanted to say, hey look how progressive we are. We hired a brown Muslim woman to restructure the way that we create our product. 
So these higher ups at Marvel wanted to change the way that they made their comics. They wanted to change their comics into exactly what they were doing with hiring this woman. They wanted to change them into a virtue signaling medium, just like Twitter is. That's what they thought the future was for the medium of comics. And so they hired this woman as a part of that virtue signaling. And what did she do? Well, she produced a character that is simply virtue signaling that has no substance behind her whatsoever and she went into a comic that is just virtue signaling that has no substance behind it whatsoever and this character and this comic although it never generated any kind of spectacular sales it never generated any groundswell of support in the comics itself you had this woman and this comic being praised and being given these virtue signaling awards that themselves have no substance behind them from these virtue signaling organizations that again have have no substance behind them whatsoever. So what is going on with this woman at Marvel? Well, simply, she is being used. Used to show and point out to everybody, look how progressive we are. See how progressive we are? Look, she's even producing this progressive character and this progressive comic, and we are putting her in charge of all of the rest of the content and the character development. Give us awards. Give us these virtue signaling awards. Why? Because we can't actually base our success on saying that, look at the numbers, look at the sales, look at the groundswell of support we're getting from our fans, because none of that is there, and they know none of that is there. So they need these kinds of awards to point to, to say, look, Look how much we are impacting the society with putting out our message in this way. This is exactly what is going on. And this is a perfect snapshot of why the current comic industry is nothing but a mechanism for virtue signaling. So, if I've given you anything new to think about, hit like. Hit the shield in the lower right-hand corner of your screen to subscribe. And leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about all this. Alright, I'll see you later. Bye.